studio that's going to be giving us all of his insights and educating us on his uh, about his journey. So let us start. Let me introduce him to you first. He's a well-known spiritual leader, a spiritual activist, a teacher, and uh, a practitioner of bhakti yoga. So he's also very well known as the walking monk. Is is Holiness Bhakti Mark Swami from Toronto in Canada. He's going to be speaking to us about his journey as a walking monk entitled Tales from Trails. So very interesting. And yes, good evening and welcome to His Holiness Bhakti Mark Swami. We are so grateful that you accepted our invite and you're here to, as I said, educate us. Education is the key. And that is why I actually created these platforms for um, people from all over the world to actually come and learn. It's all about learning and keeping the minds active and you know, trying to deviate from stress and anything that we cannot control. Well, thank you so, so much for having me on board. I appreciate it so much. And uh, while we have a different world here, it's the middle of winter and snowbound. Uh, the sun mm -hmm. is shining, though, and then you're dealing with the heat over there. So there's diversity. And what keeps us together in oneness is our spiritual topics, I guess you would say. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, uh, of course, absolutely. Yeah, thank you so much, Maharaj. We actually, yeah, as I said, we're very grateful. So before we start, I always mention the disclaimer on behalf of Mindful Trinity. Um, yeah, so to all of the new, our new viewers that are uh, just coming on right now, thank you so much for joining us. And if you already don't know, the topic is Tales from Trails. We have His Holiness Bhakti Mark Swami is going to be sharing in all of his insights and his knowledge from his journey of Tales from Trails. So the, uh, the disclaimer that I'm going to be mentioning, the opinions, views, and beliefs expressed are those of our guest speakers and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Mindful Trinity or the policies of the company thereof. The content of the show does not constitute any legal or medical advice and is provided for the general insights and guidance if you require specific legal, medical, or any professional advice, you should contact a specialist or a qualified practitioner. And also, Mindful Trinity is not affiliated with any religious organization. We actually independent. And again, this platform is just created to educate and you know just to help society heal, grow, and yeah, just progress together. So um, to His Holiness, can you tell us more about what the topic Tales from Trails mean? Well, um, trails refers to, uh, you know, a roadway, a pathway through various venues, uh, the wilderness, uh, forests, uh, along rivers and lakes and the mountains and so on and so forth, and also through valleys and uh, as well as through uh, urban areas uh, and where there's industrial units all over the place or residential, uh, you name it, I've walked through it. Um, I walked across Canada, my homeland, four times, and that takes a little bit of doing because it's a big country. So it's wider, broader than the U.S. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also walked the U.S. once. And then I've done a few other countries like Ireland, uh, Israel, um, as well as Guyana, Trinidad, Mauritius, and the Fiji Islands. Three islands amongst the Fiji Islands. So that's to my credit. And uh, that's what I've been doing. And for what purpose? Uh, to get more in touch with myself and uh, to the elements and to go for a, a kind of a healing, humbling experience. Because when you are out there in the open, uh, you are just a little speck, really, in the world and the universe. So I have a chance to meet a lot of people during those events. I started the long distance walks back in 1996. And so that's 25 years ago. 
And I guess you could so almost say, let's celebrate. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yes, I'm a monk. I am a, thank you. I'm a monk, right? So my name is <laughs> the title Swami. And uh, this uh, affords me the opportunity to, uh, to do what monks do, which is to travel, wander, and go out for inspiring people and to get inspired. And that's what happens. In fact, each time that I do a new walk, it just gets better each time. Thank you so much. So tell us, what inspired you to go on this journey? It sounds so interesting. There's many reasons. One reason I would say I, I have a guru. His name is Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. And it was going to be his 100th anniversary birthday. So in celebration, I thought, let me do this. And I also wanted to experience more the life of a monk, the life of simplicity, downscaling, eating the things that I like to eat, uh, a little bit on the lighter side. And uh, whereas I stay in a temple or an ashram, as we call it, where the food can sometimes tend to be a little bit on the rich side. So <laughs> I thought, let me go about and reduce some karma and reduce some pounds as well. And uh, so uh, for various reasons, I, I, I took to the road and I have no regrets. I would say there was a lot of media coverage. I had a chance to... Uh, just get out there and gain some experience with the general public and meet any Tom, Dick, or Harry, or Mary <laughs> <laughs> along, along the road and uh, make friends. The whole idea was kind of to, uh, it was a friend raiser. That, you know, mm -hmm. All of these walks that I've done, not necessarily fundraiser, because you may have in South Africa people who do marathons to bring mm -hmm. about awareness. Well, yes. indeed, that's what I was doing, raising awareness a little more towards the self, meaning the, the spirit as opposed to the physical body. And uh, I would say it worked. Um, uh, people were kind along the way. And because the lifestyle is simple. Like I'll be walking along the road and I'll have a support person each time I walk on the go on these major uh, you know, marathons. And they'll check on me once in a while to see if I'm still alive <laughs> and bring some art. Like I'm on a vegetarian diet. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, we have our special line of food that we prepare along the way. We eat twice a day. And if anybody wants to be interested, I, I got to explore what are the natural ve uh, vegetations that are about that you can consume that are nutritious and delicious at the same time. So it was a great learning experience for me and uh, just to um, get in touch with nature and see it close up, which can only be had or experienced when you get out of the car and, or mm -hmm. out of a train or out of a plane, whatever. And you um, just go for that walk and do what our bodies are designed to do, which is to, you know, from head to toe, we're actually, our machinery is designed for walking. And uh, so I wanted to do that most natural organic thing. And um, so that's basically what's behind the marathon walking. And, um, you know, I'm, pretty excited about it i'm i'm i'll be turning 69 soon and wow. uh, my knees are a little bit wearing down uh but we're going to do something about that uh but I, I would love to if i started earlier uh vaishnavi if i started yes. earlier in my life i would really just want to do the whole globe I would cover South Africa. I do Russia. That would take me a whole year. I would just want to do the whole thing. And once I finish the globe, who knows? Um, there might be Sputniks, an operation that will take you to the moon, and maybe I'll try another planet. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely inspiring. And I'm sure um, those that actually have the opportunity to, to join us tonight, they are so inspired to, to keep it because... During this old pandemic, I think a lot of us have been picking up the pounds. So during this old pandemic, how, you, how have you been uh, coping? Um, especially with, because I mean, you actually love doing this walk. 
So how, well, how have you been coping? Well, thank you. I, I have been coping and I've been hoping also. Uh, you know, we're just, it's like when you fly and you go through, you know, the dark clouds and you have some turbulence sometimes. So life is about that. It's about going through happy times and some low times. It's about, you know, hitting the valleys and hitting highlands and uh, going through thick forest. And then sometimes even what's like very like almost desert-like dynamics. And so it's just a matter of going through it and accepting. What's nice about the walks is that you can't turn off the temperature. You can't even turn it or adjust the large na na mother nature's thermostat. You just mm -hmm. have to basically accept what's there. And so in this way, you develop a sense of detachment. So the mm -hmm. way I've been dealing with the pandemic, I've been staying uh, pretty grounded in Toronto. And uh, I live in a monastery or an ashram, mm -hmm. and I get a chance to walk practically every day. And uh, that's whether there's snow or ice, or uh, I get a chance mm -hmm. to do that. And of course, we're almost like full circle in terms of a year since the pandemic and the restrictions started. So I've gone through four seasons while being grounded here. And I'm coping with it by walking, by taking a break and getting out there and taking what we call the good prana, you know, the good mm -hmm. air, the life force that comes from the air. And uh, even mm -hmm. during snowy times, like what we experience here, the air is probably at the optimum best. It's very fresh. And uh, with snow around, you know, you have that sort of... Uh, you know, let's say effervescent uh, dynamic that that exists. So it, it, it's good. You just have to watch your step. Uh, and uh, so I've been coping with it. I just don't have that same interaction with people. I'm a world traveler. Uh, I do mm. get to South Africa every year. I to India, mm. to America, and various other locations, South America. And uh, so I'm missing that the mingling with people. So I guess that's a part of, uh, you know, what we what we have to accept for the time being. Yeah, but yeah, uh, I, I would say you, you get a chance to explore new areas, new streets in your city that you've never seen before. Go, the whole idea is to walking uh, enhances adventure. You know, adventure is what is a big part of the package deal. Of, of walking mm -hmm. every day. And of course, you have time to introspect. Um, when you're walking, uh, there's a chance to meet people. Most folks are masked, and you have to try to read their eyes a little bit more because there's nothing else to read. And that's all kind of fun. I take life in strides of fun, or what we call ananda. And walking certainly allows that, whether it's a big trek or a little one, uh, my message is walk and rock. <laughs> <laughs> That's really inspiring. So can you tell us how many miles or kilometers have you done thus far? Well, uh, usually on an average day when I'm doing the marathon walks, uh, when I first started, I was doing 42 uh, kilometers average which I found out later on well that's the marathon stretch wow gee mm -hmm. and uh, more lately I've been uh, you know just taking a little bit more easy and uh, going at about 35 kilometers or which is 20 miles in the United States they mm -hmm. they go with mileage right mm -hmm. so that takes uh, eight hours to nine hours a day uh, which is it's a it's a good hike and so collectively, you know, if we're taking, uh, I've done like 7,000 kilometers times four doing Canada four times. Uh, so if you do your math mm -hmm. there, that's, that's 28, you know, 28,000. Mm -hmm. And then America is another, you know, again, might be about six, five to 6,000 kilometers. So you can add that on. And then uh, mm -hmm. with the other countries, e easy 30,000. And I usually do a journal. I journal every day. And I take, have a blog where I uh, ex, um, 
express my experiences for the day as a monk or as a walker mm -hmm. and let people know what I've seen or what I've smelled or tasted or touched. And uh, awesome. so that that adds up, it, it you know, accumulates. You know? So lovely, very nice. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I see we also have um, Karana Karana Devi Dasi. Welcome. We so great. We, we very, actually very grateful that you uh, have joined us this, this evening here in South Africa. So I'm not sure where about you are joining us from, uh, wherever you are from. So thank you so much. Maybe you can actually tell us where you are joining us from. So you already told us quite a few of the places that you've been, um, that you actually visited during your, the course of your journey. Can you tell us some of the, more about your experiences? Sure. Well, you know, a common question that people ask is, what was the most impressive place? You know, what's your favorite yeah. place? And my answer mm -hmm. is very frankly, I'll say, uh, wherever I am at the moment, that's the best situation. Mm -hmm. Like I had a member of the CBC, that is Canadian Broadcasting Corporation, come to me with a tape recorder. That's back in 96. Remember those old relics? And she was asking me questions. And I was near the end of my walk. Mm -hmm. And that was 96. And she asked, OK, so Swami, um, uh, tell me, how many pairs of shoes have you worn? And so I say, it's four pairs I've gone through. And uh, uh, why are you doing this? And well, it's for spiritual healing of our nation, for our people, you know, to get back more to the personal in interior of our very selves, I mean, the spiritual side. And she'll ask all kinds of questions. Then finally, at the end, she said, so what was the greatest experience you ever had, you know? while on this walk, mm -hmm. now that you're almost finished. And so I I kind of went stage fright. I kind of like froze like, like an iceberg. I didn't know what to say. I was just, it was milling through my mind. Well, what was the most, uh, let's say, exhilarating experience or whatnot? And then I, then I thought my answer came. I said, okay, well, actually the most, uh, the most exciting thing I had in my, on my walk, this walk, was I'm standing here and you're standing in front of me and you're asking me this question. And that's the greatest mm -hmm. thing that ever happened on this walk. <laughs> so she really jumped on the situation says, oh, I get what you mean. It's like living for the moment, being in the present. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, that, that was one experience. I mean, you do meet with wildlife. And uh, on the third walk I had across Canada, I met with a grizzly bear. It was uh, it was pretty serious, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you some details. I offered a little prayer to God, to the divine, and I said, you know, it's my third walk across Canada, and I haven't seen one bear. That's ridiculous in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be very nice to see you uh, in, in the avatar in the form of a bear, you know, from a distance, of course. And uh, so. <laughs> I was walking with my support guy. We had a, a routine where he would drive five kilometers ahead and then walk back to join me. And then we would, you know, go forward to where the vehicle was and then kind of like a mm -hmm. leapfrog type of method, right? So it was, yeah. I had offered this prayer and I was quite serious about it. I just wanted to see, you know, a, a big furry guy. <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> me and my friend, we were talking, we were in the mountainous area of British Columbia and uh, just coming around the corner on a very quiet highway called the Crow's Nest Pass uh, was what looked like a, like a, an ape, like an African gorilla with big, uh, you know, mm -hmm. hump on his shoulders. And so I wow. looked at, you know, I looked at a closer and said, hey, wait a minute, what's that ahead of us? It looks like an ape or a gorilla or something. I said, no, no, actually, it's a bear, and he's coming our way, and there's no shelter around here. We're walking through National Park, and it's quiet, and it's early in the morning. So we decided to just, we keep walking, and what was interesting about this bear is that he did not see us. Bears don't see very well. And this was a grizzly bear, the big guys. And, uh, mm -hmm. but he smelled us first. He smelled, he got up on his, 
you know, hind legs yeah, and stuck his nose out in the air. So, um, mm -hmm. and then went back down and was walking pretty much right in the middle of the, of the two lane highway. And we just kept going with, you know, our, mm -hmm. our faith is quite strong. The road is like your amigo and you feel the road will always bring help. So, uh, <laughs> there, but there was no way to go that you couldn't, there's no, there's no people. It's just wilderness, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, so the road was an incline. You couldn't really go anywhere. You're stuck on the road, uh, like a narrow path. So fortunately, a motorist came by, and he tooted his horn, and the bear took off. So we kept walking, the two of us, and then we heard a snort behind us. And then we turned around, and mm. there was the bear, this huge thing. And it was clearly interested in us, OK? Now, my buddy and I, we knew enough not to panic and we knew not to run uh, because that gets the bear excited. You know, we we, we uh, learned enough, we studied enough about, you know, how to deal with these animals, you know. Mm -hmm. So we did walk backwards a bit. <laughs> we started to chant protective mantras <laughs> and also <laughs> raise your arms up. So you're supposed to do that because the eyesight of the bear, as I mentioned, is not very sharp. If he sees something tall, he mm -hmm. may back off. But this is a grizzly. Nothing really intimidates them too much, whereas black bears, mm -hmm. they may. So we kept chanting, uh, Namaste Narasinghaya. It's a Sanskrit mantra meant for protection. Mm -hmm. And uh, we talked to the bear a little bit as well, you know, just like to make we're like we're friends with them. We, we're walking backwards, and mm -hmm. you're you're very big and strong, and you're beautiful. Those kind of things we were making. And uh, I was talking to my buddy Garuda. And says, "What are we going to do? I, you know, there's no place to go." So, so, and in my mind, I was thinking, if the bear starts charging, and he was really just four meters away from us. That's all. And if he starts charging. I could go, I was thinking, I'll go one way and my buddy can go the other way. At least one of us will be safe. <laughs> uh, so anyways, what transpired then? We're walking in what a big sort of cavernous mountain valley. And there was this mm -hmm. noise, like almost like the roar of a lion. And it was going, mm -hmm. and what it was, is it was mm -hmm. a big transport trailer coming from at the bottom of the valley climbing his way up, shifting gears. And it made such a resonant sound, like a, an echoey dynamic. And uh, uh, we could see he was coming. He was coming behind the bear, way behind. Bear couldn't understand. And we just kept praying and hoping everything would be OK. That's the first mm -hmm. uh, motorist we saw for uh, many minutes. And uh, so finally, the bear could understand. Uh, the uh, the high, the road was shaking underneath his paws, mm -hmm. and he finally figured it out. The sound is coming from behind. So we looked behind, and then he dashed off once again, and we didn't see him again. Wow. And the lesson to be learned is you have to watch what you pray for. <laughs> mm -hmm. We could have been breakfast. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm sure you actually have lots of these stories to, to tell us because, I mean, you've been doing uh, these, this, this type of journey for quite a while. Um, so I'm sure you have more of these challenging situations and what advice would you give to all of us that are actually going through challenges in life, how to overcome them? I mean, you, you did give us some sort of uh, advice during the course of your um, discussion right now, but I mean, do you have anything further? Yes, surely. I mean, uh, life is full of challenges. It's a, mm. uh, let's say, a, a, a pathway to uh, successes and also failures. And uh, I think walking the tight rope, so to speak, or going down the, the narrow path, which we call mm. in our yogic circles, we call it dharma. Follow mm -hmm. the codes that you're meant to follow in terms of your psychophysical nature, 
you know, do mm -hmm. what you ought to do, do what you're meant to do and what you're obligated to do. Uh, and then there's re some relative protection. <clears throat> Mind you, we'll never be fully protected. This world is full of janma, mrityu, jara, vyadi. Janma means birth, and then there's death, and there's old age, and there's well, disease, like as in the virus mm -hmm. that's going around right now. Um, so we need to simply do our duty. Our obligation is to uh, be ready to protect ourselves. Definitely build up your immunity when it comes to disease. Mm -hmm. And I think people are not doing that well enough. Um, so mm -hmm. if you eat right, you'll think right, and you'll be right. Uh, and mm -hmm. I think we need to look at our diet, uh, and that will make a big difference. And uh, we tend to get quite hyper about things. Well, then take the, uh, the food uh, uh, elements that will calm you down. You know, some of us are quite fiery by nature. And so it might be a good idea to look in the kind of dietary uh, edibles that you need to learn how to calm down. Or if you're mm -hmm. kind of person that needs to get a little more, become a little more fiery and excited about things, then take those kind of foods, learn about those kind of uh, you know, foodstuffs that uh, would actually uh, heighten your, you know, get you a little more excited and exhilarated about things. So that's one, one thing. And for myself, I take up mantra meditation. When I'm walking uh, these long distances, I spend the first two, three uh, hours uh, chanting on meditational beads. Uh, and uh, I find that's very, very calming. Um, so I, you know, we have to be ready for any weather conditions. So uh, the greater storm than what you have, what comes from mother nature is the stormy mind, right? And the mind certainly is all over the place. Uh, it's here, it's there, it's, uh, it's pretty much everywhere. And what you want to try to do is ground it, bring it here to the present moment. And that, that's a particular energy called sattva gun. It's an energy that you, we have to become more familiar with. And um, so it's, we try our best to tame this wild mind. And uh, let's say conditions such as we have currently in the world with many people having a rather tough time, you know, economically and also socially domestically it's uh it really makes a it's a good idea to kind of meet with your yourself and get a little more acquainted with your inner being and mm -hmm. then um you know then whatever happens physically that's hard to change but what we can change is uh you know that which is uh, within you know so look within, mm -hmm. that's what we're saying. Look at your, your uh, anti-material or spiritual side and mm -hmm. uh, try to develop that, cultivate that more. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like culturing a garden, you know? Uh, you know? Just watch the weeds that come in and pull them out and make sure there's watering that goes on. And, you know, you want to feed yourself, uh, let's say your mind, the things that are going to be wholesome. I, mm -hmm. We live in a world where there's a lot of, uh, let's say, uh, naughty, if I can use that term, naughty impressions, whether it's optically or it comes in the form of sound. Uh, I think that if we can encourage a culture more towards a, a softness uh, in these particular areas, uh, then uh, we will just become more relaxed and calmed and, uh, and build up our confidence. Um, so those are just a few tips I would like to offer. And, you know, mm -hmm. when you're on the road, you do meet once in a while, we call redneck dynamics. You know, you meet people who are not mm -hmm. so nice. I would say that it's, it's rare, but it does happen. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, like it's kind of a cowardly act, but someone will slow down. They'll yell and scream out. You're some kind of freak because you got your, you know, interesting robes on. They can't relate to it. Mm -hmm. And all you have, you know, my experiences with these encounters would compel me to say that, okay, well, this person is insecure. 
I'm hoping that and praying that one day that person who is too cowardly to not get out and talk about what his issues are and mm-hmm. wants to just run off like a coward, that uh, mm-hmm. he will be able to build up some some confidence in himself and not mm-hmm. have to resort to that kind of childish play. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's like that. Most people are just really kind, generous. They'll give you food. They'll give you sometimes mm-hmm. money. Water is the most common thing. And mm-hmm. rice crispy rice crispy squares, if you know what that is. I don't know if you have them over <laughs> there. <but laughs> anything you know, uh, to show their kindness. And uh, and just the, the greatest kindness for me is for someone to pull over and, and walk with me a little bit and And uh, Mm -hmm. if they don't know already what I'm doing now, I have a chance to express uh, what my mission is all about. And uh, Mm -hmm. and again, I just like to encourage people to follow in the footsteps of uh, introspective people. And um, just like Nietzsche, the famous uh, philosopher, he said that uh, the greatest ideas come from when you're walking, you know. Mm -hmm. And so uh, uh, and that I found to be very true. You know, it's a, it's a beautiful dream time. It's a brainstorming time and mm-hmm. planning time as well. You know? And I think we owe it to ourselves to go for that, even just a short walk, uh, whether it be 30 minutes or an hour. I'd recommend an mm-hmm. hour uh, and go at uh, an easy pace. And then maybe you can go at a, a faster clip uh, as time goes on. Mm-hmm. But uh, I, again, I think it's an integral part our, of our, uh, as humans, to, to be walking. I mean, if mm-hmm. we were fish, we'd be given fins and a, a way to maneuver ourselves through the water. <laughs> and that, that's another thing. Um, in Canada, we have so many lakes and rivers, and uh, there's no shortage. So if it's uh, one of those hot days, you kind of just jump in and you get so relieved. Yeah nature provides yeah. so do you do you when you go on to these uh, these walks do you go alone or is yeah, there usually I'm alone. Alone. yeah my support mm-hmm. person will drop me off at the spot from where I left off the day before mm-hmm. and okay. uh, th- that'll be usually when it's dark uh, before the sun comes up and mm-hmm. um, you know so I'm usually alone but I'm not alone, okay. you know, because uh, yeah. God in the God in the heart is always with you, right? And I'll have a tendency to walk in the middle of the road when there's hardly any traffic, and just keep my eye mm-hmm. open for the headlights coming from either side. And uh, oh. you know, because we do have mountain lions and we have uh, wolves and coyotes, not too much to worry about usually. Uh, uh, the, the greatest thing to fear is, you know, a uh, Mosquitoes, <laughs> mm. black flies, horse flies, deer flies, all kinds of flies, and they're real pests. So uh, it's uh, something you have to contend with. Yeah, that's that's all. Yeah, that's actually really inspiring. I'm actually quite inspired. Um, so. Can you, can you tell us where in the world would you like to visit next? I mean, you did tell us your favorite places and you actually love to live in the moment, but where would you like to visit next once this old pandemic is something of the past? Well, when things open up again, I'll be visiting various places in Canada. And uh, Mm -hmm. I'll like, it depends when. I have a routine. I Mm -hmm. get invited to different countries in the world to participate in their big festivals. And I'll work with their Mm -hmm. local uh, youth and uh, stage plays, you know, of Mm -hmm. of morality Mm -hmm. content, like I've done in South Africa in the past. And where would I like to be? it really doesn't matter, as I said before. When mm. you go with the spiritual motive, it doesn't matter where you are. It's good wherever it is. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's very true. Really. Yeah, I'm actually quite inspired by this now. And I like what you said, to live in the moment. Because a lot of us, are, if we're not living in the moment, we're either living in the past or in the future. But right. we fail to realize when we're not living in the moment, we're actually missing out on life. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would say that there's three energies to live by. One is in passion, one is in thoughtfulness, 
and another one is in just ignorance. So mm. when you live in the moment, you're very much in thoughtfulness. You're very perceptive. When we spend too much time thinking about the past, you know, um, there's a tendency to be lamenting and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, living in the past. It's like a mode of ignorance, you know. And then there's mm -hmm. times of the day where we'll spend a considerable amount of time uh, looking into the future, you know. And I would say that an average person, is it, like when you're walking, you have a chance to sort these things out in your head. And mm -hmm. uh, I'd say probably it's 33.3% is spent in each one of those three phases of time, past, present, and future. But it's really important mm -hmm. to get yourself back into the present moment. Like uh, mm -hmm. I can be walking. This is one thing you don't want to do when you're long distance walking on the side of the road. You do not mm -hmm. want to have a bunch of head, like headphones on your head and listen to your, you know, James <laughs> Brown singing, I feel good or something like that, which is a great piece of music <laughs> to walk by. Uh, and then you forget where you are, you know. Mm -hmm. So in other words, you have to lift this and you have to actually uh, hear what's coming your way, you know, mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of just safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I actually really enjoyed having you um, share all of your knowledge and all of your experiences with all of us. Um, just before I recap our conversation, I want to ask our audience, both on Facebook and on YouTube, if you have any questions for His Holiness Bhakti Mark Swami, please do take, partake and ask your questions. You can actually type it down in the comments feed. And I'll be able to actually ask them on your behalf to, um, to Swami. Yes. So just to recap our discussion, what I picked up was you mentioned on our diet. Our diet plays an important factor in our lives. And also um, not just eating healthy, it's also about moving the body. Like with you, you actually do your walks. If you're not actually walking from, from town to town or from city to city, you're actually walking around wherever you are and you are living in the moment. And all of us should be also um, following in your footsteps and also living in the moment. Um, so yeah, there was actually quite a lot. And also with all of the challenges that you've been through, you actually encountered during your, your journeys, um, you actually never lost focus of your intention. You know, yeah, yeah, they did. I, I guess well, they, got, they got lost on the trail somewhere, you know? Or they're taking a little nap somewhere behind the tree or a rock. That's one of the most amazing things about the walking. Uh, one of the greatest highlights or, or let's say rushes that I get is where will I take a nap? You know, mm -hmm. will it be in the in the corn field or in the soybean field or will it be behind a rock or behind a tree? <laughs> and while I'm lying there, will uh, Will some kind of hungry animal come my way and, uh, while I'm there? And you know, <laughs> and and you you get to a point where you say, well, if they come, they come. You know, what are you gonna do, right? Yeah, that's true. Like some you, other, said, you feel <laughs> you, you feel a kind of a protection. You know, yes. Most animals are they look at humans and they say no good, and they just turn the other way. <laughs> mm -hmm. Most animals so, are yeah. like that. They just uh, yeah, yeah, that's true. I guess just as much as we fear them, they also fear us. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, because we're unpredictable. You know, mm -hmm. we are very extremely so unpredictable. You don't know what to expect from a human. You know, what kind of weapon we may yeah, have, or yeah. what kind of device mm -hmm. in defense we we may use. So, you know, I don't blame them. Yeah, I think they work very much on instinct. <laughs> Yeah, that's so true. So I so see I like, there's two questions. Okay. Sorry, go go ahead, Maraj. Go ahead I was before just going I go to back say, to the question. I like I like to encourage people to go for these kind of national walks. I had the pleasure of walking on the uh, the famous Camino in Spain for a stretch. 
And there are some mm -hmm. real outstanding trails in the world. There's one that starts from Niagara Falls and goes 900 kilometers north in Canada. And it's mm -hmm. just all forest and waterfalls all over the place. Just, just absolutely gorgeous. And mm -hmm. um, so it's the beauty that you take in. It's the, there, there is pleasure and there's also a lot of pain. Mm -hmm. You have to sort of, you know, juggle the two together and learn how to accept the dualities of this world. Yeah, it's quite uh, tough for the normal person to actually accept it. I guess you need to be sober in mind and I think you need to be more connected with your inner self in order to accept both good and bad. Yeah. Well, in many places in the world, we lead a very cushiony lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And so roughing it up, uh, Roughing it up, sorry, is just something that's not a uh, concomitant factor of our lives mm. today. Uh, mm. I think some people that do live in rougher circumstances, they can probably handle a long distance walk better than most of us uh, softies, if I could use that term. <laughs> <laughs> true, true. Okay, yeah, let's go to our questions. We have one from Brindavani. Brindavani asks, how do we remain youthful and alive and spiritual, fun, even as our bodies age, while still remaining a strong spiritual disposition? When we talk about youthfulness, we're generally referring to lots of high energy. And uh, a person who is on the path of mindfulness or spirituality mm -hmm. usually tries to connect with that that energy that is available right in the beginning like say for instance going back to the three energies that mm -hmm. we're sort of wrestling with uh, or dancing when i say wrestle it's a it's a fun body contact it, it's not mm -hmm. like a like a brute strength and you know, trying to kill the other the opponent it's a, it's really more like a fun game like a dance so mm -hmm. try to dance with uh Again, the mode of goodness, uh, optimism, uh, where there's optimism, there's productivity, there's mm -hmm. revelations and epiphanies that come about. Uh, so uh, it's uh, looking at each day in a fresh way, not mm -hmm. as something that's, the day is not there to, to flog you or to you know, whip you to death. It's there for opportunity. So I think that uh, you, we have to be very bright eyes on, on how we look at life. And, uh, and then I think then usefulness will be retained to some extent until the yeah. machinery wears down. <laughs> so it's, it's just on how you view the world. You know? uh, it's just your, your take on it, your perspective. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's just uh, which lens are you looking at? So if you look at the lens of productivity and optimism mm -hmm. and wanting some good output and wanting some achievement, uh, and then uh, surely you look at life with, with a freshness. And um, so the body, yes, it will dwindle, it will deteriorate, it will fail us to some degree, but uh, I think what's really important is to keep that wisdom uh, flowing, uh, mm -hmm. tap into the books of the treasure house of wisdom that's there. Like mm -hmm. I followed the Bhagavad Gita, which means mm -hmm. the song of the divine. Mm -hmm. And that gives you, you know, uh, a fresh challenge that you look at every day. It keeps mm -hmm. you youthful. Because mm -hmm. after all, I, our true identity is that of the spirit as opposed to the body, which is mm -hmm. made of matter. So reflect more on uh, that which is spiritual as opposed to the physical self. Both are important. They need to be mm -hmm. married together. They need to be combined very well. Mm -hmm. But uh, when, when the physical self starts to dwindle, then it just means in most cases, people have to you know, give a little more attention to their spiritual side. Mm -hmm. And this oh, naturally yeah. is, this is what happens naturally for people as mm -hmm. they age. Youthfulness gets transitioned from mm -hmm. the physical to, to the more metaphysical. 
Yeah, I think um, most of us are always in denial. I know I am in denial and I don't want to age, but it's part of nature and we all have to age. The most beautiful gift you can have in life is wisdom. And mm -hmm. wisdom doesn't seem to run parallel with youthfulness. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I guess our question has to do, can I have both? You know, okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> it just usually doesn't work that way. Yeah. 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 Wisdom keeps another... you alive. And, and uh, the practice of, you know, mantra meditation together, people singing and dancing and, mm -hmm. and uh, doing it. I'm not talking so much. On, I'm not a big fan of, uh, of the romance uh, songs, you know, which usually the, the best singers in the world. And I, I'm just generalizing, you know, the songwriters. <laughs> they're the ones that are the, the least, uh, let's say, uh, expert um, in in what we call love. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, the, most songs are about craving, longing, or about lamentation. I had love, I lost my love. And it just gets repeated again and again, the same. The lyrics slightly change, but the message is the same. And after a while, it just gets a little boring. Oh, you know, <laughs> let, why, don't we, why don't we go for the love with a, on a bigger scale, love with mm -hmm. the universe and the creator behind the universe. Mm -hmm. That is very profound. And that is, that is long lasting. I actually like that. I actually like what you said, because I was actually thinking about it um, very recently, a few days ago, that when you actually listen to these Western songs, um, it's quite depressing. And you, you don't want to listen to it because you, you don't want to get into this negative rut. Again, uh, well, majority of the time, most of them are, like you said, about lamentation. So, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I had you. I lost you, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's the same old baby, 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 baby. <laughs> you know, I mean, like we, in, in Canada, we have some outstanding there, uh, some songwriters, and uh, well, they're not a big part of the focus these days, but we had Joni Mitchell and Gordon Lightfoot, and they were incredible poets, you know. They, they would penetrate. They allow you to, uh, let's say, to probe into life in areas that people naturally do. But we, uh, they allow you to explore. You know? So it's, it'd be nice if we can get off that sort of uh, uh, lust platform, which uh, seems to bring more grief than joy. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, to be honest with you, I, I'm a monk, so I can say these things. You know, <laughs> lo lustful renderings are so short-lived, you know, that you wonder why dwell in this in these this zone so much. You know, the real love, real satisfaction comes from a deeper level, much deeper. We have to go deep. Yeah, that's true. So we have another from. Ruini Kumar, he asked, what role did drama play in your journeys? What role did drama play in my journeys? And the question mm -hmm. is there because uh, I do, I am a playwright. I do write dramas, right? Mm -hmm. So when, when I'm walking, uh, I think about some of the projects that I'm about to take up, like whether it's the script writing or you know, in the midst of a play and we're kind of stuck somewhere as to how to, how to project ourselves or how to, how to convey a, a particular, uh, you know, story or, you know, a certain blocking in the play. And so I find that when walking, it stimulates the creative juices. Mm -hmm. It does. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. again, like if we were to quote Nietzsche and, and things like that, um, people of that caliber have that to say that walking brings out the best in you, you know, uh, the mm -hmm. brain is happiest and, and, and you get that oxygen, which also is good for so many of the body parts. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, you become very creative and innovative. And then I'll be walking somewhere, sometimes even in the nighttime and suddenly just like a big light, like lightning. Oh, that's it. 
now I know how, like when you're stuck in a scene, then you get unstuck suddenly. And it's all because you're walking and doing the most natural thing. Mm, absolutely lovely. It actually, yeah, again, I'm saying, I'm saying it again that I'm actually very inspired by this and I, I'm going to start walking from tomorrow. It's already uh, really late here, so I can't do it tonight. <laughs> Okay, so I'll double check on you. I'll check on you to see if you're going <laughs> You know what? I actually, Maraj, I actually do, uh, I teach yoga. But okay. uh, with me, actually, you know, I think even a yoga teacher also needs someone to check up on them. So, yeah, I will really appreciate that. So I can actually start taking care of me as well. <laughs> Beautiful. Charity begins in the home. That's true. That's true. So do you have any uh, parting thoughts uh, for audience? But before you share your parting thoughts, maybe share your social links where our audience can actually find you in the virtual world. Okay. Uh, social links. I mentioned that we have the walkingmonk.net. That's my website. And we also have uh, on Instagram, the walking monk. Uh, we are on Facebook. Uh, we are on Twitter. And, um, you know, YouTube, and you might find me YouTube as well. Uh, okay. We have some of our dramas there. And uh, okay. recently we released uh, uh, our first film called Rolling the Dice. So you okay. might like this, Rolling the Dice. It's a little excerpt from the ancient text, the Mahabharata, done in a contemporary style. So wow. that's, and then that's virtual. But you okay. might see me walking down the road in your neighborhood. That'll be wonderful. If you see a mug, <laughs> it's probably me. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually have uh, some of your links, but what you can do is email me uh, the links that I don't have, and I'll post it on to my social pages so people can still find you um, if okay. they already don't have it. So Correct. we have another question before we close. Um, this is from Devij Bhakti. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's a male or female. This person asks, I am so much attached towards drama as I am drama as I'm a drama, drama artist. In our temple, um, I always want to be in drama like, like a center of attraction. Is it wrong way? I mean, is it bhakti? Yes. Uh, so uh, I understand that uh, at one of the centers there uh, where they uh, promote bhakti, they have what's called bhakti theater in, in Durban. So they might like to, you know, the person who's curious may like to you know, check into that one. Um, getting What happens is that, I don't know if you're a younger person, a lot of people like to approach drama because it gives them a chance to show themselves and, and to prove themselves. And there's nothing wrong with that. It goes along with being youthful and, and in some cases good looking and you know it gives you a chance to actually uh, project and do something for the world, mm -hmm. uh, a chance to flaunt yourself. But And if the message is to elevate the consciousness of the audience, then that's also great. That might be a secondary reason. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, a lot of people will say, especially when you're young, you want to say, I want to be a star. I want to be recognized. I want the whole world to look at me. I want audience. I want thundering claps, you know, and <laughs> I want to be under the bright lights and so on like that. I want fans all over the world. That's okay, but... Um, yeah. That's okay, but I you want to be careful not to be carried away. Again, most show business people, they get very consumed by their audience, and uh, that becomes their first love, oftentimes more so than their love with friends and family. That's what sort of history tells. So mm -hmm. if you're that exceptional artist, that's my, probably what's going to happen to you. Uh, but um, uh, if you... If you'd like to spend some time uh, as a hobby, um, you know, engaging in uh, theatrical thespian practices, then uh, I would certainly go for it. You know, mm -hmm. why not? Right? There's always a need for the public to be entertained, and there's more need now during the pandemic than any other time for good entertainment. I even tell devotees sometimes who feel like devotees of uh, bhakti yoga if they're a little depressed they say mm -hmm. well when's the last time you saw a good mr bean uh, flick or something <laughs> like that <laughs> yeah, we have nice. to we have to laugh like oh, in our studies we understand we have a god who 
mm-hmm. who's who's a, a laughologist who makes you laugh or makes you smile yeah. at least, mm-hmm. and who's a charmer. You know, mm-hmm. that's not a vindictive god. It's a mm-hmm. uh, it's a it's a god that uh, that brings about an appeasement in one's life. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I think uh, I would encourage the the dramas go for it. Right? You, people can write plays. They can do technical. They can be on the stage. I always mm-hmm. look for. Uh, people of all those kind of makes uh, when I put my productions together. If somebody's a good martial artist said, hey, I can use you. Do you know some form of dance? You know? mm-hmm. Yeah, I know ballet. I know modern. I know classical Indian. Okay, great, great. We'll use you. <laughs> so um, what well, would you say um, or what would you advise us to find a balance in our lives? Like you mentioned, Sometimes we can get carried away when we actually in the limelight, but how would we balance our lives? Uh, how to balance life? Well, uh, if you want to be very highly technical about it, there's 24 hours in the day. How much sleep do you need? Usually in the uh, uh, yogic culture, you need about six hours in that. If you sleep much more than that, you dream too much, and it just mm-hmm. means you're, you need to be get up and be active. So... Uh, I'd say get those six hours. You've got three quarters of a day still left. Mm-hmm. And so a good amount of that time must be taken into maintenance in most cases, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe maybe a good chunk, uh, uh, another quarter or a little bit more. And then there's time for mm-hmm. leisureliness, mm-hmm. recreation, and so on like that. And also time for going out and helping other people doing charitable philanthropic work, which is the ultimate form of happiness in this mundane world, uh, achieving joy from giving to others. I think that balance, it's a matter of, uh, you know, management skills. Yeah, it's actually drama. We're having drama. Mm. So... We have another um, comment from Brindavani. She says, thank you for the wonderful and insightful discussion. It was the oxygen I needed to end my day and lift my spiritual laughter and blissful, insightful spiritual knowledge. Thank you, Brindavani. I really appreciate your remarks. Thank you. And there's another response from Devich. He's actually, um, he's actually a male. And he says, thank you so much, Maharaj. It's a pleasure for me. He is the one that actually mentioned about drama. He actually loves drama. Okay, great, great. One thing I would say, more walking, less squawking. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) It's true. People walk more. The best comes out of you. And you have time to process your your challenges of the day. You have time to sort it out. Let's put it that way. And... um, you know, you come back uh, uh, after a good walk and you just feel uh, kind of uplifted in, in most cases, you know, and, and stronger, ready to t- tackle the, uh, the challenges of the, of the hour that come, you know, each minute practically. <laughs> Thank, you Thank you so you. much. Thank you so much. Do you have any parting thoughts to share with our audience before we close? Parting thoughts, I would just say, because we're essentially spiritual and not physical, the physical part of us will dissolve at some point in time. So therefore, invest in your real self, the spiritual side. Thank you so much. Um, Yeah, this was actually, you will hear some background noise. I live near a mosque, so I'm going to try and... I think uh, the azan is actually overpowering me, but I will try my okay. best. Sure. Thank you so much for such an, uh, an awesome discussion. I learned a lot and I'm sure all of my, the viewers also learned a lot. I mean, like all, with all the comments, we all can actually feel the love and the appreciation. So thank you so much for being on this platform, sharing all of that with us and yeah, educating us. We learned a lot and also laughed a lot. So thank you. It was food for thank the soul. Thank you for having me. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank Please you. Please take care and have a good thank year, you. 2021. Yes. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.